we all have different things in our life that have scarred us. We want to act like those scars don't exist. So those scars, like, you know, if you go out and you get cut, that scar is going to be there on your arm. You can go down and look at that cut and say, oh, or, or, or that scar and say, oh, that happened from, you know, I was in the kitchen or what happened. We have the same thing on our brain. I have all these scars on my brain from growing up, from, you know, suffering through life, from having to learn disability, from stuttering, from having a, just a really bad childhood. And so all those memories, I had to cut open that scar and go into it. And that was a hard process for me to do. Not only was that a hard process for me to do, for me to have the courage to share that with people, you know, because I'm the so-called toughest man on the planet. So they think. So for me to break open that shell and, and tell people, hey, that wasn't always me. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to do, you know, it's hard to do. So it was, it was, a, it was a tough process. My dad was a person that, um, he was an alcoholic. He was really big on being a powerful man. And he had two different sides to him. He had a side that once we left our house, so our house was the dungeon. No one knew what, no one knew anything about what, you know, about the inside of that house. The inside of that house was, was horrible. It was evil, it, you know, like the evil monster came out to play. But once he left that house, he was the nicest, person on the planet so no one knew you know who this guy was so um, the scarring started happening inside the dungeon and my dad didn't really believe in us going to school he had a family business and the family business was a skating rink and also a bar so my dad owned the, it was called the Vermilion room was the bar and the skating rink was called Skateland so from the time I was able to walk I was working that 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 that, that I'm skating rink and I worked it from like nine o'clock at night until like 12 o'clock in, you know, in the morning, pretty much. That's what we did. You know, I'm, three, I'm, you know, I'm four years old, scraping gum off the, off the skating rink floor, doing stuff like that. Me and my brother and my mom, once the skating rink was shut down, the bar would open up. The bar would be open from like midnight to like four o'clock in the morning, three o'clock in the morning. Once that closed down, we'd go upstairs and clean the bar. So by the time you work like this, you know, I'm a young kid, it's time to go to school. So most of the time we didn't go to school. So we missed school a lot, but thank God for me, I didn't like school anyway, with a learning yeah. disability, with a stutter. You know, I had white splotches all over my skin from being stressed out, um, hair, you know, patches of hair falling out at a young age. And once my dad got drunk, that's when the nightmare began. That foundation of life that I didn't have, that's how it started off for me. And it's progressively got worse. So when you have a horrible foundation, it's like building a house on a, fucked up foundation. This is what you're gonna get. You know, any kind of uh, earthquake or something happened, the house is gonna go down. Sometimes, you know, it doesn't even take an earthquake. It takes a little windstorm. So that was me. I was just a little windstorm away from breaking. Yeah. All the time, a windstorm away from breaking. But no one knew it. I walked around like I was a pillar of strength at a young age. But that internal conversation you're having back here is this weak little kid, very afraid. And um, I think that's what makes the book very powerful because I take you there. Yes. I take you to that spot of, you know, I'm superhuman now, so you think. But a lot of people have a lot of problems that they can't overcome. It happened when I could never get over the hump. I kept on feeling like I was getting over the hump. And then one little windstorm, small little windstorm would come by and push me back to scratch. It's like, why? Why am I not, you know, I'm, you know, I'm learning how to read now. You know, I was a junior in high school and couldn't read that well, a fourth grade reading level, because I would, I would cheat on everything. And I learned how to read, I learned how to write. I taught myself all these things, all these disciplines. But whenever the first real big challenge would come, that little windstorm would push me back in the hole. And I realized, man, I'm not, I'm fixing stuff on a surface level. I'm all surface, man. I'm not going deep into the cellar of my mind in fixing the foundation of my soul. My soul is broken. And, but you know, I knew I could fix it, but I was afraid to go back. I was afraid to face the demons of my life. You know, cause you start lying. You want anybody knowing this shit about you. So, so you start lying about who you're not and start creating a person about who you want to be, but it's not who you are. So that's when I started realizing, man, I'm never going to get over the hurdle. I'm always going to live on a surface level until I go deep deep into the sewer of my mind to figure out and face all of these different demons. That's hard. It's hard. We all like social media. We all like everybody to see us 
for who we want to be. That's why we post beautiful things about us. That's not, that's not going to fix you. So I realized that and that's when I started going back. So I was about, um, I was about 24 years old and I went from 175 to almost 300 pounds. And um, that's when I sat down on my couch and realized <laughs> we got to go back. And it started with me going back to my father. So we, we left when I was eight years old. We went to a small town in Brazil, Indiana. It was about five to 10 black families in a town of 8,000 to 10,000 people. So when you come from a messed up foundation like I did in Buffalo, New York, and now I have that messed up foundation, and now I'm here being the only black person. I call it the only in my book, being the only black person. My mom's working three jobs. We're living in a $7 a month place. She's never at home. So it's not like I had some mentors coming in to help me. You know, they were trying to put me in these different group places for like having some shrink talk to me and these eight, nine kids and one kid setting his house on fire, another kid's peeing in the trash can, another kid had a helmet on, banging his head up against the wall. And I'm looking at this at eight years old. You know, and, I, and, I, and I'm gonna get back to your question that you asked me, but these are the things I had to go back and relive. You know, I'm 24 years old now I have to go back to all these things that no one knew about me in this group place where I'm in this place where these people are crazy and they think I'm crazy. And I'm looking at them thinking, I'm not crazy. You just don't know where I come from. I came from a place that truly damaged my mind, damaged my soul, and now I have to go back on my own to face this shit. So, you know, at, at 24 years old, I sat there a lot of times, it was like one day, I woke up and said, I gotta face this. This haunting fucking voice in my head kept on saying, man, we gotta go back. The only way we can go forward is to go all the way back. And that's very scary to do for everybody. Yeah. But the only way you're gonna fix yourself is to go all the way back to the beginning, to your childhood, because that's where everything starts. And so this is the world that you're in. You're somewhere, because you have to be somewhere. Now you might not know where that is, which means that the somewhere that you are is chaotic in which case you need to go over your past in great detail and figure out where you are. It's like you're lost, right? You're, you're lost and the problem with being lost is when you're lost, you don't know where to go and the problem with not knowing where to go is there's a million places that you could go and a million places is too many places for you to go. So being lost is not good. So you need to know where you are. What should move forward in time with me and what should be let go as if it's dead wood? And the more dead wood that you let go of and burn off when you have the opportunity, the less it accretes around you. It, it's also a lot easier to let go of something when you're deciding to let go of it, because you've decided yourself that it's, you're done with that. It's a weak part of you. It needs to disappear. You do that yourself, it's much better and much easier than it is if it's taken away from you forcibly, in which case you're very much likely to fight it. Let's say you're miserable and unhappy. Okay, here's a cure. Find what's valuable and let it go. So we could say, well, maybe it's a relationship that you have. Maybe it's a relationship with your parents, right? And the relationship is pathological, but you're locked into it, you value it. And no wonder, because it's a relationship with your parents and you're suffering terribly because of it. Well, what do you do? Maybe you let it go. It's a sacrifice. And the idea is that, well, that'll clear the future for you. Well, very frequently when people are suffering terribly, not always, because sometimes you just suffer stupidly, blindly, and without recourse, you know? You get cancer and then you die. So we have no idea how to deal with that. But sometimes the reason that you're suffering is because you just won't let go of the thing that's biting you. And you think, well, I can't let go of, and I've had clients like this. I can't stop communicating with my mother who phones me three times a day, every day of my life, and never says anything that isn't unbelievably critical and demeaning. I can't let that go. It's like, well, that's not such a good idea. The funny thing too, often when people let something like that go, it goes away, sorts itself out, and then comes back. So they don't even end up losing it. But unless they're willing to let it go, to sacrifice it, they make no headway whatsoever. And so one of the rules is, if people are impeding your development, you sacrifice your relationship with them. Right? It's a very, very rough rule.